Yes, it's John G. Sutton. Nervous twitch and all. Tales from the Jails. I want to talk a little bit about armed robbers and uh, people in prison and weapons that people use. I, I say the news is inspired by a real charmer. A real charmer called Fergus Muldoon. Fergus Muldoon is a jumped up plastic gangster armed robber who managed to get himself into jail. He comes from the area in Scotland around Perth, I believe, because he was just recently there, sentenced to a further four months in prison for making a weapon that he secreted in his cell. And uh, they were, it was discovered by prison staff on a routine cell search. Yeah, he had already been using weapons on other prisoners before he'd slashed somebody from their ear right to the mouth uh, with a razor blade and uh, he got sentenced to uh, imprisonment for that. So he's now got himself some more and when he's been on the outside he's been, I believe he's emulating John McVicker, you know. You know, trying to be a tough guy, uh, armed robber. But I've seen the looks of Fergus Muldoon. And he looks like a spotty little kid. No doubt wet behind the ears. And thinks he's a gangster, so he goes around injuring other inmates. So if you manage to get petered up with spotty Muldoon, then beware. There's a song about him, isn't there? He probably hasn't heard it. So if you're in there, up round the round the jails in Scotland, and you meet Spotty Muldoon, Spotty Fergus Muldoon, this is the song you've got to sing him. Spotty Muldoon, Spotty Muldoon, he's got spots where others have not. Anyway, that's Spotty Muldoon, that's it. slashing people. I've seen a number of people slashed with razors. It cuts right down to the bone, you know, you get a razor blade in there. What they do is they get a, a toothbrush or something like that, cut, slice it uh, and knock the razor blade in it, you know, so it, it works like a shiv, you know. And if you, you just hit and pull like that, not demonstrating how to do it, folks, but that's what happens. It takes quite a few stitches you get in there because you've really got to... And, uh, I mean, I've stitched loads of people up. Not stitched them up in court, you know, physically with a needle. And it is like needle and thread, you know, it's special thread, of course. And uh, I'm not the world's greatest sewer. So there's people out there today who've got my handiwork all over their faces, arms and backs. Because they've been stitched up by John G. Sutton. Another guy I met who was a, an armed robber, a notorious armed robber, by the way, called John McVicker. Yeah, now, I don't know, I didn't lock McVicker up. He was in the Scottish jails, Barlinny and the Bar L, yeah, and, and all that up, up there. But he was uh, a notorious prisoner. When he came out, he wrote a book called McVicker by myself and a subsequent book about uh, Jill Dando about who killed Jill Dando yeah and uh, apparently he later admitted that he'd fabricated a lot of the strange stories that he invented uh, that went in that book you know he used his imagination I think he called it poetic license He'd probably robbed it off Shakespeare or somebody like that. Somebody who could really write. I don't know if McVicker can write or not. I haven't read his work. I know they made a film about it. And in the film, it's quite clear that McVicker considers all prison officers to be extremely stupid. And uh, he's a highly intelligent man. That's what he thinks. Because in the film, uh, McVicker was played by Roger Daltrey of The Who, you know, The Who's lead singer. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, Dalton gives a good performance in that, but 
the 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 the, the basis of, of of the film seemed to be that all screws are not not jobs. Stupid, and uh, the prisoners are the really smart ones, especially John McVicker. Well, he might be. I met him. Uh, I was doing a TV show in Birmingham at Pebble Mill, I believe it was Pebble Mill Studios. Uh, I was doing a program just shortly after the Strange Ways riots, and uh, myself and John McVicker were invited to discuss the prison system and uh, I, I said to him you, when we're finished you know he would get a drink at the bar in here you know and he said no he said uh, don't drink he said I'm taking something else so quite what he was taking we didn't get round to discussing but <clears throat> I believe it was something illegal and uh, got you out of your head Anyway, <clears throat> so that was my meeting with John McVicker, short and sweet. He didn't seem to care too much to speak to a f former prison officers. Now, I wasn't serving a prison officer at the time. I I'd left the service. I left the service in 1985, in November 1985, for medi by medical discharge. Yeah. The Home Office sent me to see a psychiatrist. Yes, sir. Said I was mad. Psychiatrist said, uh, Mr. Sutton, you're not mad. He said, but that system is, and I recommend that you never return. So that was the end of that. The Home Office psychiatrist pronounced me incredibly sane and the prison system incredibly insane. Yeah, so that's how I got out. I got out. I did me time. And I'm going to sing you a song now, you lucky people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to sing you a song about a revolutionary who was fighting for the workers' rights, just like I tried to fight for the workers' rights, except they took it one step further with him and killed him. They shot him. Uh, his name was Joe Hill. I'm going to sing you the song I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night. Usually performed by the Dubliners or the Clancy Brothers or <clears throat> John Bayer's recorded this. So whilst I'm in good company, I certainly won't be singing it anything like John Bayer's, will I? I like John Bayer's. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you and me, says I, but Joe, yet ten years dead, I never died, says he, I never died, says he. In Salt Lake City, Joe, says I, standing by my bed, they framed you on a murder charge, says Joe, but I ain't dead, says Joe, but I ain't dead. The copper bosses killed you, Joe, they shot you, Joe, says I, takes more than guns to kill a man, says Joe, I didn't die. Says Joe, I didn't die. And standing there, as big as life, and smiling with his eyes, says Joe, what they could never kill, went on to organize, went on to organize. From San Diego up to Maine, in every mine and mill, where workers defend their rights, it's there you'll find Joe Hill, it's there you'll find Joe Hill. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you and me, says I, but Joe, you're ten years dead. 
I never died, said he. I never died, said he. There you have it. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill. Yeah. Hope you've enjoyed this little uh, video. Do subscribe. It's all down there, I think. Yeah. I'll be here again. Tales from the Jails. John G. Sutton.